In today's video, I really wanna try making a weaving inspired by a vintage floral tile. Let's get started. I want this piece to be about eight inches wide and eight inches tall for the actual woven part. So I'm gonna be starting my warp on the third notch in. I'm going to be double warping my loom with 8-8 cotton. This is a bit of a thicker warp string, but I'm going to be treating every two warp strings as one for the most part. So I'm going to warp my loom until I get to about eight inches wide. So I'm at about eight inches now and I have a total of 64 warp strings on my loom. I do wanna hang this piece directly from the loops, which is why I both started and stopped on the bottom of my loom. So I'm gonna cut off that excess, tape down my loom, and then we're ready to get started with the weaving. I have a piece of cardstock here that's a little over three inches, and I'm going to be weaving it over to under two warp strings because it's just a little quicker than going over under every single one. Now for my piece, I'm actually going to use the warp string as the fringe, so I won't be adding additional fringe to this one. So now that's in there and it's nice and secure, I need to create some sort of base for this piece because otherwise when I take it off the loom, it's gonna wanna shift. I think I'm gonna use my off-white yarn color here. This yarn is a medium weight yarn and I will put a list of the tools and materials in the description box below. So for my base work, I wanna do a twining stitch and probably a couple rows of plain weave with the over one, under one, just to make sure that both at the bottom and the top, we have everything really secure. So once it's off the loom, it's not gonna wanna slide around on us. Um, so I'm going to do one row of twining followed by probably three rows of plain weave. So I'm gonna take a little bit of extra yarn here and I'm going to go in with that over one, under one plain weave. So this is just your typical tabby or plain weave, the most basic form of weaving. I'm leaving this tail on the right nice and long because as we do that twining, it's gonna wanna tighten up a bit. I'm gonna leave a bit of an arch and push this down close to the bottom. And now I can go ahead and do my twining stitch over top of this. As I'm doing my twining, I'm really tightening it up because again, I don't want that to shift around and I want it to spread these warp strings nice and evenly. Okay, I have my twining in here, it's really secure and now I'm going to go back with just regular plain weave over one, under one for three rows. Now we're ready to map out our diamond shape onto this piece. Now to finish off this end, I'm just gonna loop it back around that far warp string and leave myself a nice long tail to tuck in later. So I'm gonna actually be drawing on my warp since it will be all covered up by the weft strings anyway, but I'm gonna use a Sharpie. Now, if you're nervous about using Sharpie on your warp, you can use something like this water slash air soluble pen. It's disappearing ink. So it's gonna be easier to wipe off if you feel like you didn't put it where you wanted to. For your sake though, I'm gonna use a Sharpie so that you can really see it clearly. So we've got our center two strings here. And I'm gonna just go ahead and mark about eight inches on those center strings. Then from there, I wanna go to the side and mark four inches and to the other side and mark four inches. I'm also going to mark my center strings at the bottom just to keep track of those. Then I'm just gonna simply connect the dots. So I wanna draw just a simple diamond shape Okay, so we have a bit of a diamond shape on here and now we can get started with weaving. So what I wanna do is off-white in the middle and then the brown color here for the edges. So it's almost like a partial tile. You know those really pretty, just simple diamond tiles? We're doing that. So I'm gonna grab a nice long piece of this brown. I'm gonna be doing about three arms lengths at a time. That's my preferred length. But this time we're weaving a little bit differently. We're gonna go over to under two. Since I have an even amount of warp strings, this is gonna be a little bit imperfect, but that's okay. So I'm gonna just start on the left side here and I'm gonna start weaving over to under two. And we're gonna see where we come to for the bottom of this diamond. So I'm actually coming, so here's our center two strings and you can see that I'm actually grabbing one of those center strings. I'm gonna leave a nice long tail and beat that down. So then I can simply just turn around and go the other way. Again, just doing over two, under two, 
back across the opposite of what I did for that first row. Now, this is gonna be one of those pieces that takes some time to weave because it's a weft-faced cloth, which means we're actually not going to be seeing the warp strings in this main part of the weaving. So you can see there that I'm completely covering up, oops, I'm completely covering up those warp strings. So now I can go back across and we're going to use those black marks we made to figure out where we need to turn it around and when. Now I think for this row, I'm gonna do another row where we just did one and then back across. Now we wanna be really conscious of our edges that we're not pulling those warp strings in. For this next row, I'm not going this far, I'm coming in. We're just simply following the marker line that we created before. So down here at the start, you can see we only have two loops. Now I'm doing three for this one. That's just where it looked good to me to start turning around. So now it looks like we can probably turn around two more strings in. You can see I'm really focusing on stacking these edges nicely so that they all are sitting the same way. Okay, so as I'm going up, I'm seeing that what's working best, even though I started with only two loops down here, for the rest of the rows, you can see that there's three loops. So I'm basically making sure that there's three loops on this side string and then I'm coming in two strings. So I have, I just finished my three loops here. So on this next row, I'm coming in two strings. So I'm coming to here. And that's giving us that angle that we need to follow what we drew on the piece. Okay, so my string is officially too short now. I'm gonna try something a little bit different. I'm actually going to end this string back in here. So I'm stopping right there and I'm gonna start right next to it. So I'm gonna grab a, a nice long piece again because I do need to weave more brown yet. Okay, so I've finished this one going over these two warp strings, which means it would be going under next and then over these two. So I'm gonna put this yarn right here. We're gonna see if that works. And that worked great. So it's just kind of disappearing into the back, but it's not on the edge. And we have just two strings, two pieces of yarn to tuck in later. Okay, so we're kind of, we're right close to where our mark should be. I think my, my off white is gonna come all the way to the edge right here. So I'm gonna stop here. I'm gonna just leave this yarn attached over here just in case I need to make any changes later. And basically all I'm gonna do now is do this exact thing here, but reflected over this way. So I know that at the very bottom, I did two loops at the edge and then I'm going up in threes for the rest of the way. Something I'm making sure of is that I'm beating this side down as much as this side is beaten down so that everything is gonna end up horizontal and straight. So now that I'm done both sides here, I'm just gonna see that these are about, I'm gonna see that they're landing the same place on the warp on both sides. So here I'm at about seven and a half and about seven and a half. So that's pretty good, I'm happy with that. Now we're moving on to the off white. So I'm gonna grab a nice long piece of this again, just like I did before, about three arms lengths is what I like to work with. As you can see down here, we're gonna be left with a diamond that isn't pointy at the end and I kinda wanna see if I can cheat that a little bit. So instead of just going in between what we've all done here, I'm gonna grab our very center two strings and I'm just gonna wrap this around once here to try to give us a little bit of a point. And I might even do that twice. So we have a little bit of a point now, but now I'm gonna start going over to under two. So what we're gonna be doing is we're going to be butting up 
our off-white string with the brown. We're not interlocking it, we're going next to it. So I know that for here, I'm gonna go over these two and then I'm moving over to these two. So you can see that the loops of the off-white are just sitting next to the loops of the brown. So we need three loops here, right? Because here is where we started going one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So we're gonna do the same thing with the off-white, actually. I'll take that back. So for this first section, since I was trying to get some sort of like point for our diamond, I'm gonna allow there to be only two loops right here because technically we have some loop going right here. So now I'm gonna move up and we're gonna match these ones. And we're just using that plain weave over two, under two. We now have three loops butting up against three loops here and on the other side. So now I can move to the next step up and we're basically just filling in this entire gap. After I finished the first half of the white diamond, I just repeated that in reverse. After that, I finished in both sides of the brown and I finished the top the way I started the bottom, but instead of going twining and then plain weave, I just did three rows of plain weave and then the twining at the top. Once everything was done being woven, I flipped it over and tucked in all the ends before I start doing the needle felted detail. I want this weaving to feel a little bit like a vintage tile with a flower on it. So I'm gonna use one of our small flower looms to create a flower for the center. So I'm using this really pretty blue yarn. It is a medium weight yarn as well. Um, unfortunately, this particular one doesn't exist anymore, but any medium weight yarn you can use. To make this flower, these are super easy. We're gonna put the end of the yarn down through the middle of the flower loom, and I'm just gonna kind of hold it there with my left hand. Then I'm gonna start wrapping. So I wrapped it around that peg, and then I'm gonna move down to this peg. And then we're just gonna wrap around and then go directly to the one across from it. And you're just gonna keep doing that. Don't pull your yarn too tight because you don't want this to be really hard to get off of. What we want to do is we want to do multiple wraps around each of the pegs because otherwise our, our flower is going to be very um, thin and I want it to be a little bit fuller. So I'm just going to go ahead and go back around probably two or three more times. So I've done about six wraps around this. I'm going to cut a really nice long tail and then I'm going to grab a little yarn needle. So what I'm gonna do is thread up my yarn needle here. And basically what I'm gonna do is I'm going to start separating the yarn between each of the notches and I'm gonna start fishing that through. So then I'm going to the one across from it. I'm gonna just separate these with my needle first but bring it from the bottom. And this is what's gonna start creating the center of the flower. So now I'm going between these two notches and I'm gonna come up through these two down through these two and up through these two through these two so now that I know I've caught between every notch of the flower loom I'm just gonna go back around this one one more time to meet up back here so this is our tail that we started with and I'm just gonna go ahead and tie this in a really tight knot, but I'm going to keep the length of the tails for when we attach this to the weaving. So I've tied that nice and tight, and now I can start slipping this off of the little flower loom. So this is where it's important that you don't do it too tight, because it does make it a little trickier to get it off of here. So just really carefully, I'm gonna start slipping this off of here. So I'm left with this cute little flower that I wanna add to the center of this piece. Add a bit of a needle felted center for it just to make it a little bit more special. So I'm gonna grab uh, my piece of foam that I needle felt onto. I'm gonna lay these tails out. Then I'm going to grab just a little piece of merino in this really pretty light blue. I can always add more later if I feel like this isn't enough. And I'm just sort of balling it up in my hands. So I have this little handle here um, just to hold help hold my felting needle. And I'll just show you how this goes together if you're at all interested. It's just like a friction fit. Okay, 
So this just makes it a little bit easier to hold on to the needle. And I'm basically just wanting to add a center to my flower. So all I'm doing is I'm gonna start just going in and out with my felting needle. Now, something really important with needle felting is that the direction you go in, you need to come back out. You don't wanna put it in, angle it, and then pull it out because this is really highly likely to cause your felting needle to break. So you just kind of want to go in and out in the same direction. And all that needle felting is, is tangling up wool, in this case, directly into our yarn. So I'm lifting up the flower from the foam every once in a while, just so that I know that I'm not felting this whole thing into the foam more permanently. So now I wanna kinda of tuck in these ends, so I'm angling my felting needle, but remembering that I can't angle it and then turn it while it's in there. So I need to keep it at that angle as I go in and out. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with the center of my flower. We're gonna attach the flower to the piece and then see where we're at, if there's anything else we wanna add or not. So I'm gonna find the center, or at least close to it, of my diamond here. And I'm pretty happy with that. And I'm just gonna, poke my needle right through the weaving with that end. And then I'm gonna grab the other end. So this one's coming down on this side of this warp string. So I'm gonna put this one down the other side. This is just gonna give us something to actually tie the flower around. So I'm just gonna tie this nice and tight in a knot. So I'm gonna go ahead and tuck these ends in just like I tucked in all the other ends. Okay, so we have a cute little flower in the center. So after all that, I realized I would prefer a white center to the flower, so I just simply added some white over top of the blue center I had done already. I'd like to add some leaves, so I'm just going to take a little bit of this green, and I'm gonna start needle felting a leaf shape just onto the foam. I'm gonna have to keep peeling it off the foam as I go so that it doesn't just get completely felted into the piece of foam. I would needle felt these leaves directly into the piece, but it is so dense that it's actually causing the needle to bend. So I need to create the leaves off of the loom and then attach them after. Once I had one leaf shape kind of figured out, I made three more leaves and a couple of them ended up a little bit bigger, but I don't really mind that. So I'm just gonna use those at the top and the bottom. Then I took a really thin piece of a darker merino wool roving and I just felted that straight into the middle of the leaves, which helped give them a bit more dimension and you can see makes the leaf curl up a little bit to give it a more 3D look. So next I'm gonna actually sew these leaves into place and I found this really dark embroidery thread in my stash. So I'm actually just gonna use a little piece of this to stitch them to the weaving. So I have a bit of a pointier yarn needle and I'm gonna go in from the back to start. I just wanna catch the bottom of the leaf here, somewhere in the middle. And then I'm just gonna stitch across here just once so that we can lock this in place. And I used that dark color cause it kinda hides in the wool. You can barely see it. I tried this with white and it just showed up so much so I didn't wanna use that. Now at the back, all I'm gonna do is tie that string in a knot nice and tight. And then I can grab the same yarn needle I used to tuck in all the ends and I can just tuck these into the back. So that one is secure and I'm gonna move over to the next one. I'm gonna do that same thing with the other three leaves. Now I want to cut it off the loom. So this is the bottom of my piece and I want the warp strings to actually be the fringe. So I'm gonna keep it pretty short. What I'm going to do is use this edge to be my marker for cutting this off. So just carefully, I'm just gonna do a few strings at a time and I'm just butting my scissors up to this edge and that should give me a really straight line. And then I'm going to carefully take this off of the loom. I am going to comb out the bottom, but I wanna put the dowel on first just to get that out of the way. So I'm setting some books on top of the piece just to hold it down. I'm gonna grab a my little dowel here. I'm going to take two loops at a time and hang this directly from the loops. You just open up two loops, stack them on top of each other, open them up, flip them forward, and bring those loops together. 
And then when we slip it over the dowel, you can see that we have this cute little grouping. For my dowel, I'm using a 5 8 inch thick dowel and it's about eight and a half inches long. Now I'm adding a hanging string using the same string I used for the warp. Now I'm going to take this rope brush, which is really similar to a cap brush, so whichever you have on hand will totally work. And I'm combing out the fringe so it basically just unravels the warp string, making it look more full. Okay, it's all finished. I love it. Let's have a look at the final piece. It turned out so cute. And if you enjoyed this video, check out this one next.